How quickly we have moved from Jesus being hailed as a king by the crowd on his entry into Jerusalem just a few short days ago, to the mob now baying for his innocent blood, attacking and spitting on him. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, he was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with grief. How often in our world today, we, like the mob at Jesus' passion, fail to recognise and cherish each other's human dignity. How often our world today speaks of human beings in the language of hate, dismissal, or as just another material resource to be used and abused as, other, as others want or need. How often we measure a person's value by looks, productivity, or bank balance. But what about our brothers and sisters in this world who fail to meet these measurements of value? The homeless person or the drug addict who sits on the side of our streets begging for money? Do we even acknowledge their humanity by giving them a kind reply or perhaps passing the time of day? I remember once hearing a homeless man saying that what he found most difficult about begging wasn't someone not giving him money, but the amount of people who just walked by without even acknowledging his existence, his human dignity, through a simple smile or greeting. Or the refugee who comes from a far country, bringing with him different habits, traditions, values and ways of speaking. When they make us uncomfortable, can we resist the temptation to put up the walls of self-protection or the desire to cast them away from us or to use them as easy scapegoats when things go wrong with society or with the economy? Or the human being yet to be born, powerless and voiceless in the womb? Can we see them as precious gifts in their humanity, so full as it is of possibility and wonder? Or do we all too easily see them as yet another mouth to feed or an inconvenience to our preferred lifestyle? Or the person who has committed the gravest evil which disgusts us or who has hurt us in the deepest way? So often our newspaper headlines cry out with phrases such as evil monster or heartless beast. They too have a humanity disfigured by sin and awful choices, and by a life journey which has brought them to many dark places. Can we call them again to their true and higher path? Are they beyond the mercy and redemption of God? The basic truth revealed to us in this Holy Week is this. Christ suffered and died out of infinite love for all of us, the helpless, the greatest sinner, the suffering, the lonely, the forgotten. In his passion and death, in his suffering and disfigurement, in his rejection and condemnation by his fellow man, Christ has joined himself forever with suffering humanity. He has placed himself in the midst of our brokenness and pain and brought his healing and transforming power to all who call on them in their need. Every time we refuse to compromise on the human dignity of others, every time we give a word of acknowledgement, of mercy and forgiveness, of compassion and love to another, we become like Veronica, who knelt down before the disfigured and abused face of Jesus and uncovered the face of his humanity hidden beneath the wounds and spittle. When we imitate Veronica's act of compassion, we are simply recognising the fundamental truth about ourselves and others. We are all made in the image and likeness of God. We are all joined to each other as brothers and sisters in the same human family. And that no matter who we are or what we have done, no one is beyond the love and mercy of Jesus, 
who humbled himself to suffer and die so that we might all rise to new life in the power of his resurrection. Yes, yes, yes.